Okay, welcome back everybody to the second hour of our lecture on Daniel and Reve uh, Revelation. We, uh, we are now in Daniel chapter nine and we are getting into verses 24 to 27, trying to understand what angel Gabriel spoke to Daniel concerning and his people and his city. So just before the break, we mentioned in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, that when Gabriel spoke to Daniel, he said, Daniel, 70 weeks, or if you see in the margin of your Bible, it will say 77s. And we will explain what that means. But what we just pointed out was 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. So he said, Gabriel, Gabriel told Daniel, this is about your people and your holy city. So whatever he has, is spoken there, verses 24 to 27, has to do specifically concerning the Jewish people and their city, which is Jerusalem. Now, I've shared this with you in the notes and uh, uh, you could uh, look at it carefully, uh, that the 70 weeks referred to are 70 each week uh, represents the uh, okay, um, yeah, I forgot to cover something important here. Let me come back and cover that later. Let's go to chapter nine, yeah. The, the uh, 77s, right? Uh, let me, uh, we are looking at Daniel 9, verse 24. The 77s, uh, each seven represents a period of seven years. Now, how do we arrive at that conclusion? And that there, there are several ways we can come to that conclusion. One is by just looking at the usage of sevens, you know, in scripture. So in, in, in Genesis 29, when uh, Laban, uh, uh, sorry, Jacob, is serving under Laban, uh, you find its usage once over there, Genesis 29, 27, and 28. Uh, in Genesis 29, verse 27, uh, Laban says, fulfill her week and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me still another seven years. So. Genesis 29, 27. Hmm? Uh, and verse 28, then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter, Rachel, as wife also. So what is Laban saying? Basically, Laban says, you fulfill a week. But that week actually means seven years. Genesis 29, verse 27. Fulfill her week. What is that week? A week is seven days, but it is actually used to represent, talk about seven years. So when it says that Jacob fulfilled her week, which is seven days, that means he fulfilled seven years. He worked for seven years. So one way for us to understand, when we go back to Daniel 9.24, 70 weeks, that means 77s or each week represents a period of seven years, like we see in Genesis 29, right? So 70 times seven, right? Because each week represents a period of seven years. So we get 490 years. Right? And I've explained it uh, further uh, that, um, the, the, that one week represents seven years in Daniel chapter nine, right? So the 70 weeks, 77s, the other 
uh, way you look at it is the word Shabuwa. Uh, it's used for both seven days and also seven years. Right? So you can calculate 490 years. And uh, so we are we're saying, you know, whether you, you, you uh, that word is days or years, but we see that a day is also used to represent a year. Uh, is equal chapter four, four to six. So both from Genesis 29, the way we see how it's used, and also in Ezekiel 4, 4 to 6, how it is used, we are confident to say that these 490, 70 sevens, that's 490, actually represents 490 years. Okay. So uh, back in chapter, uh, verse 24, the angel is saying 77, that means a total of 490 years is, is determined for your people and for your holy city. So he's saying, you know, whatever I'm going to tell you is going to happen in this period of 490 years. Right? So what's, what is going to happen? So you go back to verse 24, he says, in these 490 years, these are the things that are going to happen. There will be an end to transgression, end to sin, and there will be reconciliation or atonement for all sin. But there's also going to be everlasting righteousness being brought in. Uh, the prophetic word, the seal of vision and prophecy, that means to complete, fulfill the prophetic word and to anoint the most holy. That is, uh, the you will see again in your margin, the most holy, it says, the most holy place. So when he says to anoint the most holy, he's talking about to anoint the most holy place, the temple. So he's saying in this 490 years period, all these things will happen. Now, what I want to point out, and we will see also, is that there's actually a time gap between the first three and the next three. The first three, we will see them fulfilled in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Prince, which he's going to talk about in the next verse. Jesus came, he brought an end to sin, and he made atonement for sin. That means he broke the power of sin. He set us free from bondage to sin. He dealt with sin, basically. That there's a time gap. And then he, Jesus, will bring in everlasting righteousness on fulfill all the prophetic words that have been spoken. And the most holy place, the temple, will be anointed or consecrated. Okay, so all this will happen within 490 years. In this 490 year period is what Gabriel started to say. Then verse 25, he says, No, therefore understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem. And until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. So seven and 62. Seven and 62. That means a total of 69 weeks. Right? Seven and 62. That 69 weeks. So he says, from the time the command is issued to go and restore Jerusalem. So that was what King Cyrus did. King Cyrus came into power and he gave the decree uh, to go forth and rebuild Jerusalem. He said from that time till Messiah the Prince. Now, I just want to point out the word, the prince. 
he has used that before, right? So you see this in uh, uh, Daniel 8, verse 11, the prince of the Most High, right? And then again in uh, chapter 9 and verse 25, he uses the uh, phrase prince of princes, both referring to the Messiah. So here again, he's uh, referring to Messiah, the prince. Okay, just to point that out. But he's saying, from the time there is the decree to go and rebuild Jerusalem, until Messiah the Prince will be 69 weeks. That means 483 years, right? 69 weeks times seven, because each week represents a period of seven years, 483 years, which was fulfilled. So from the time King Cyrus issued the decree to go and rebuild Jerusalem till Jesus came, was 483 years. So 69 weeks was fulfilled. And what did the Messiah do? Well, he came, when he came, he took care of these three things. He put an end to sin and he made atonement for sin. That means he took care of this part. The Messiah came, took care of sin. And this happened in 69 weeks. That is from the time King Cyrus issued the decree to Messiah the Prince. Okay, verse 25, Daniel 9. And then he said, you know, okay, the street is going to be built again and the wall, even in trouble sometimes. That means the city of Jerusalem was rebuilt. That, that is... When King Cyrus issued the decree and the Jews came in, they, they, they rebuilt the, the city. The city was established, but it was difficult. It troubled sometimes. That happened, but it did happen. Then, verse 26, and after 62 weeks, that is 7 plus 62, right? So he's broken that up. So he's talking about after the 7 plus 62 weeks, that is after the 483 years, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. So what will happen to the Messiah? He'll be cut off. Messiah will be killed. Sure enough, you know, Jesus came and then he was cut off or he died the death penalty. He was killed but he didn't die for himself. And he was crucified for us sinners. And he said, and the people of the prince who is to come, so that means there's going to be the king who's, who's going to be in that time when the Messiah is cut off, he will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And this exactly happened. So after Jesus was crucified around AD 30, In, in 40 years after that, around AD 70, the Roman general came in and he destroyed the city of Jerusalem in AD 70 and he destroyed the temple. So it says, and the people of the prince who is to come, that's verse 26, will destroy the city and the sanctuary. So it was done. It actually happened. The Romans came in and destroyed the city and the sanctuary. Right? And the end of it shall be with a flood until the end of the war, desolations are determined. So till the end, desolations are determined. It's going to be the city and the temple is going to be under desolations until the end comes, the end of the war. That means it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen in, in, with the war and with the flood. But till that time, 
desolations are determined. That means it's the city and the temple will be, there will be destructions happening over and over again. Desolations, troubles are determined for the city and the sanctuary. And that's what's happening. Today, the sanctuary is not under Jewish control. It's under Arab control. And uh, there is constant conflict going on in and around the city and the sanctuary. And this will go on till the end. Okay, so verse 26 has been fulfilled, is being fulfilled. But till verse 26, only 69 weeks, six, seven, um, only 69 weeks, seven plus 62 weeks have been, uh, what to say, used up or have been fulfilled. So there is one more week left, meaning the 70th week, this seven years. So one more week left. Because he said, I'm come to talk to you about 77s, 70 weeks, a period of 490 years. 483 years have been used up from King Cyrus till the Messiah. From the Messiah till the end, the city and the sanctuary will be desolate. But now, what about the last seven years? the 70th week. He then speaks about it in verse 27. In verse 27 he says, Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Ah, now he's talking about the one week. So this one week is referred to as, the, as Daniel's 70th week. It's one week. And we can state with confidence when we compare it with uh, scripture uh, in Revelation, that this one week is the seven years of tribulation. Remember this one week represents seven years. So this one week he's referring to in Daniel 9 and verse 27 is the seven years of tribulation. He says, he will confirm a covenant with many for one week. So who is he talking about? We'll wait and find out. He will confirm a covenant, a covenant uh, meaning uh, a, a promise, or in modern language, we will say a peace treaty. Uh, he will confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week, that means three and a half years, a time, times and half a time, three and a half years in the middle of the week, he will bring an end to sacrifice and offering. That means, now he's saying, there's a temple, there's sacrifice and offering happening, but he's going to bring an end to it. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate. So who is he talking about? He's talking about the one who makes desolate. He's referring to that person. And this one who makes desolate is going to move on the wing of abomination. That means he's going to move uh, very swiftly, carrying out abominations, doing all kinds of evil things. Who? The one who makes desolate. Even until the consummation, and it's till the end, till everything is brought to a close, which is determined, determined, is poured out on the desolate. So he's saying, till that time, this man, the one who makes desolate, is going to do it. So in verse 27, he, who is he talking about? He's talking about the one who makes desolate. And very interesting. Jesus referred to this man in Matthew 24. If you turn to Matthew 24 and in verse 15, Jesus referenced him. He said, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, uh, 
spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, standing in the holy place. Whoever reads, let him understand. Daniel, Matthew 24 and verse 15. So even Jesus quoted Daniel 9, 27. And he's referring to this one. He's saying, this abomination of desolation is going to stand in the holy place. That means in the temple. And what will he do? He will confirm a covenant with many for one week. And in the middle of the week, he will bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And this is what he will do. So we are tying this back to uh, what um, um, Daniel has already seen in chapter 7. And because he's talking about, you know, Daniel 7.25, uh, he's talking about this 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 person who speaks pompous words uh, in for a time and times and half a time, three and a half years. It matches exactly where he says in the middle of the week. That means the middle of seven years, which is uh, three and a half years. So again, this matches very um, perfectly with Daniel 7, 25, and also with what he has shared with us in Daniel 8, when he talks about this little horn who speaks great, uh, great things and uh, fierce things. Uh, and and it, this will be in the latter time. So verse 27 is referring to the Antichrist and what he will do in the second half of the tribulation. What he will do is he will establish a peace treaty for one week, seven years, the seven years of tribulation. He will come as a man of peace. He will set up a peace treaty with many people. Uh, and he will, uh, um, you know, in initially, he will have the offering sacrifices happening in the temple. But in the middle of the seven years, he will bring an end. And he will be this man who is, is, is the one who makes desolate. He will move on the wings of abomination. He will do evil things. So that's Daniel 9, 27. Okay. So did you, let me pause here and just check. Uh, did you all understand Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27? Is it clear? Any questions? Neelam, you understood? Okay. So he is um, in Daniel 9, 24 to 27, is talking about the Jewish people and the city of Jerusalem. Okay. Now, this is why we say that the seven years of tribulation focuses in on the Jewish people. So remember the first 69 weeks was from the time of King Cyrus till the Messiah. Then there's a gap and then the last seven years, the time of the Antichrist. So there's a gap here. What is this gap about? It's the church age. It's a time when the church is the focus of what God is doing. It's the time when the church has been raised up from the time of the Messiah, that is his crucifixion and ascension, till the time of the last week, till Daniel's 70th week, the time of the Antichrist. That's the church age. And that's the age in which you and I are right now. We are in the church age. And towards the end, it will be the last seven years. Daniel's 70th year, which will be the time for the Antichrist to do you know, whatever is, uh, is revealed here. But before the Antichrist comes, 
the church will be taken out of the way. How do we know this? If you go with me to, we just cross-referencing cross now. If you go with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So the Apostle Paul is writing here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Um, can somebody read verses 5 through yeah, 10? Sec, uh, or let's say, let's actually, we need to go back. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 to 10. Somebody could read that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 to 10. Could somebody read that for us? Okay. Go ahead. Uh, maybe Dave, would you read that? Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three to ten. And read. Go ahead, uh, Thomas. Go ahead. Second Thessalonians to ten. Uh, don't let anyone deceive you in any way. Before the day comes, the rebellion must occur, and the outlaw. The destructive sun will be revealed in this true light. He is the opposing counterpart who exalts himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped. And who is it enthroned in God's temple and makes himself out to be God? Don't you remember that I went over all these things? Now you are aware of the ruling power so that he may fully reveal when his time comes. For the mystery of lawlessness is already but the one who prevails will do so until he is separated from out of the midst. Then the outlaw will be openly revealed and the Lord will overthrow him by the breath of his mouth and bring him to an end by the dazzling manifestation of his presence. The presence of the outlaw is apparent by activity of Satan who uses all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, superiors wonders and every form of evil deception in order to deceive those who are perished because they are rejected the love of truth that would lead them to being saved mm. okay so in this passage in second Thessalonians 2 3 to 10 paul is also talking about the lawless one and uh, he is also referring to daniel 9 27 he's saying look um, uh, you know, so in verse 3, he talks about the man of sin or the son of perdition is to be revealed. Then in verse 4, and I'm referencing Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, he's saying that this man will sit in the temple of God. Right? Exactly what Daniel had written, that this is what this ab abomination of desolation, the one who makes desolate, that Jesus referenced. He says this man will sit in the temple of God. And uh, you can, and then he says, you know, uh, verse seven, this lawlessness is already at work. Only he who restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. So what is keeping the man of sin from being revealed? It's the church. We are in the church, the church age. Um, we are here. And when we are taken out of the way, then the lawless one will be revealed. So when the church age is wrapped up, the church is taken out of the way, then comes the start of the Dan, of, of the seven, seven year of tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, the time of the Antichrist, when he's going to go and trouble and persecute the Jews. And of course, there will be many people who still who turn to Jesus Christ uh, when they see all this happen. And the Antichrist will persecute them or go after them but what i wanted to point out is that daniel 9 27 is referenced both by our lord jesus in matthew 24 15 and by the apostle paul in second thessalonians chapter 2 the passage we just read and again in revelation chapter 11 when we we will read about it in revelation chapter 11 and also in chapter 13 uh, by john 
the revelator, and the who received the revelation. So, about this Antichrist, we see the references made in other passages in Scripture. Okay, so everyone is with me. Shall we go a little forward now? Chapter 9, any questions on Chapter 9? Daniel? Okay, so in Chapter 10, uh, we are not going to uh, 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 the Daniel has his own vision and but he doesn't you know there, there's no prophetic scripture but he begins to pray he begins to seek the Lord and then once again uh, the uh, uh, Michael, the archangel comes and he, you know, there's this, there's a revelation in chapter 10, of course, of uh, the spiritual, uh, what, what is happening in the heavenly realms, how angel Gabriel is sent to come to Daniel, but then uh, there are uh, demonic powers that are holding him back. Michael, the archangel comes in and, uh, you know, uh, causes him to be able to come uh, to speak to Daniel. Right, so I just want to point out from Daniel chapter 10, just one verse that is verse 14. He says, uh, Daniel 10 14, he says, I have come to make known to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. So, Daniel 10 verse 14, once again. The emphasis is on the Jewish people and the emphasis is on what is to come in the latter days. That means um, they, these are things that are being revealed to Daniel. There are parts of that prophecy that have to do with future. Some have are near fulfillment, which like we said, will be fulfilled in Daniel's time and shortly after Daniel's time. And then there are those things that are kept out in the future. Right? So once again, he's assured of that. Now, chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11 is a very lengthy chapter. And this is one chapter that has caused a lot of uh, uh, problems for Daniel. You say, what do you mean problems for Daniel? Because in chapter 11, from the very beginning, that's verse 1, uh, and if you go through all the way till 35, um, Daniel is actually speaking in great detail of all the kings who actually came after the Medes and the Persians and the Greeks, which we already have read in chapter 8. Daniel is prophesying in great detail, verses 5 to 32, of the rulers who would essentially you know, occupy Egypt and Syria, or northern Syria. He talks about the rulers of the south and the rulers of the north. And then he talks in great detail what each of them will do. Now, he does not mention the names of these people, but he's referring to them as the princes or the rulers. And he is foretelling in great detail all about all of these. So many people who read chapter 11, they say like, no, this could not have been foretold. Somebody would have written it after it actually happened. Because how can you foretell such things in detail? Right? So, uh, you know, I'm not going to make us read all of that, but I want you to, uh, just in, in your time, maybe later today, to read through Daniel 11, verses 5 to 32, verse 5 to 35, 
and then just see that you know uh, uh, I mean you, you, if you're not going to look up history and read about these kings and leaders or princes from Egypt and Syria but you can just read through the passage and know that Daniel was actually speaking about these leaders of these kings who actually came So in every verse, verse 5, verse 6, they were leaders from the south, Egypt, and from the north. So um, when we talk about the rulers of the south, um, we're talking about the rulers of the Ptolemies, and we're talking about rulers of the north, we're talking about the Seleucid princes. And so they are happening in parallel. Uh, you know, and leaders from the south, the leaders from the north, they're happening in parallel. And so uh, Daniel has spoken about all of these people ahead of time. So this is what is very uh, astounding or amazing of chapter 11. Now, he didn't mention the names of these people, but Sure enough, they came, they were there, and people are amazed that chapter 11 could actually speak of kings who are yet to come, and so many of them in sequence. So people who are skeptical, who are doubtful, they say, no, 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 this was written later after it all happened. But those who, of us who believe, we understand that God can reveal history in advance. Now, he revealed things in advance to Daniel, and that is chapter 11. But what we want to do is, uh, I just want to point out is, in chapter 11, towards the end of this chapter, that is verses 21 to 32, Daniel specifically talks about a particular prince of the Seleucid Empire. He was the worst of all the previous princes or rulers. That's from the uh, northern empire from Syria, the region of Syria. He was the worst. So all of these people, they attacked the Jews, but he uh, gave himself the name Epiphanes, meaning uh, as though he is the, the word Epiphanes simply means like God is manifest. So he gave himself that title as he was God, and he, you can see in these verses that what Daniel spoke of, he actually did all that Daniel foretold. He desecrated, he also desecrated the, 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 the sacrifices and, the, you know, he really showed contempt towards the Jews. And of course, we know that later on in history, the Jewish people faced lots of persecutions from others, but Sure enough, this man or this ruler also mistreated terribly the Jewish people. And Daniel actually spoke of him ahead of time in verses 21 to 32. And later on in time, this man came uh, and actually did everything Daniel said he would do. And finally, as, as a you know, in previous visions, Daniel jumps to the Antichrist. This is in Daniel chapter 11, verses 36 to 39. Uh, and he again talks about this man who will speak against God and he will act against the people of God and he will uh, rule over many and he will try to divide the land for gain. What I want to point out from Daniel 11, 
um, 36 to 39 is that verse 36, Daniel 11, 36. He talks about this king who will do according to his own will. He will speak against, he'll speak blasphemies against the God of gods. And this is similar to what we saw in chapter 7 and chapter 8. And then we will see again in Revelation 13. And um, he won't regard um, uh, anyone. He will exalt himself above them all, verse 37. And then you also see that in verse 39, he will divide the land for gain. He will divide the land for gain. And so he's going to try to divide the land for gain. And then we know one of the challenging or challenges of our times is the land of Israel and the whole issue about, you know, uh, them, Israel, wanting their whole piece of land and yet the Palestinians being wanting their part of the land. But here we see in Daniel 11, 39, that this man who comes in the end he is going to try and divide the land for gain, right? He's going to try to do the same thing. He's going to speak against the God of gods. He's going to do his own will. And he's going to also try and divide the land. So in addition to stopping the sacrifices, in addition to causing the sanctuary, the temple of the Lord to be trampled underfoot, in addition to speaking blasphemies against the Prince of Princes or the Most High God, this Antichrist is also going to try and divide the land for gain, to do it so that he could, you know, uh, extend his, increase his power and influence. That's an additional piece of information we get here from Daniel eleven thirty nine. Okay, so I'm not reading uh, chapter 11 because it is, if you want to say it like this, we could say it's a hist it's a history written in advance by Daniel, and it was all fulfilled by these kings who came out subsequently from around Egypt and from the north in Syria. And you can read it just just for as an information, but it's amazing that. Daniel would be given such details and he wrote it down and sure enough, they were all fulfilled in history. Okay, so what is left for us is chapter 12 of Daniel, which I I kept it for next week. I thought if we can cover till chapter 11, it'll be good for us today and which we have done. Uh, and I would encourage you to just read chapter 11, although I haven't read it in class. I would encourage you to read it and then just follow along with the notes that I shared. And um, uh, the uh, uh, chapter 12 is something we will get into next class. So next class, we will do chapter 12 and then we will start the book of Revelation. Any questions so far? Uh, is everybody with me? You're clear so far? Any thoughts, any comments? Okay. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and pray and then we will dismiss. I know we are a few minutes uh, early, but it's okay. Let's pray and we will dismiss. We will pick up chapter 12 uh, from next week. Okay, we will finish chapter 12 and move into Revelation next week. Can I ask somebody to please uh, pray and dismiss the class? Okay. Go ahead, um, Thomas, why don't you pray? Please. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. 
we bless your holy name a lot we worship your father thank you for this wonderful heart of learning you are good lord father deep things need to understand the wisdom of god father as what we heard help us to meditate go through the class go through the lecture class and go through the notes help us to understand more and more deeper things father we thank you we praise you we love you daddy keep us safe that your mercy be upon us in jesus name we pray amen 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 all right thank you everybody um we'll take a break and i will meet you in our next class thank you bye now thank you pastor